That's a Dolphins rookie record. And on the other side, Miami's defense has looked like a completely different unit during their current five-game win streak. In fact, they've gone from ranking bottom four in the league on opponents' points per game, yards per game, and total QBR to top four in the league in all those same areas since week nine. A massive turnaround. Only the Patriots and Chiefs have allowed fewer points per game over that span. RC, how has confidence in their secondary helped this entire defensive unit improve? You can call it what the hell you want. You know, and, and that's why you go out and get guys. We talk all the time about different schemes. Yeah. But when you have a guy like Xavier Howard who can absolutely play any coverage because of his ball skills, on the other side you have Byron Jones, and then you have a safety like Javon Holland who really is a first-round pick. He's a yeah. first-round talent. He's a guy from Oregon that played corner. He played the slot, and he played the free safety. And now you can be so multiple in what you do. And it's so crazy because all we talk about is zero blitz, zero blitz, zero blitz, as if they go out 70 plays a game, and that's all they play. <laughs> but that's not it. They are so multiple in the way that they can drop from their blitz look into zone, or they can bring the zero blitz because of the way that they can match up, not only at the corner, but at the safety position. I think that's been a huge part of the change in this defense is that some of those turn Turnovers we saw early last year, they're starting to happen again. Yeah, look, look, I think Brian Flores went back to his Patriot days, mm. right? This defense is starting to change scheme, too, on a weekly basis, especially up front. You talked about sending the, the dog and the blitzes. We knew this team for zero pressure, yeah. right? And they should have. They had Byron Jones and they had Xavier out with two guys that they felt comfortable with on the outside. But the emergence of Jalen Phillips, being able to get after the pass, the Christian draft. Wilkins Huge getting after the pass. Yeah. They are now being able to – they're able to morph into these game plans. But to your point with the Cardinals, I got to like – these Pop last five Pop wins. Yeah. These last five wins. <laughs> yeah, hey, the, the team. You only beat who you play. But to your point, RC. But to your point, I felt early on during the season Miami was pressing defensively. Yeah. I felt like they were trying to. What do you mean by that? Like overcompensate for what they lacked offensively. You know. You know. You know is, go ahead. Go ahead. You know what I can say. You know what I think it is. When you're very good defensively, you're always trying to outdo, outdo yourself. yourself. Right. Coming yeah. into the season, all they heard was they were going to be so good because defensively they were excellent. And so now you start the season and you're like, we got to get turnovers, yeah. right? Yeah, turnovers, we got to make yeah. plays. That's pressing. I got you. I got you. Dan, do you have anything else to say? Oh. No, not about the defense. I'll talk about Tua, though. Obviously. No, let's do that. Oh, oh my God. Um, <laughs> So I, I think two things about the Dolphins offense. First of all, when I watch it, it makes me think of the, the, the Princeton basketball team, college basketball with Pete Carrill. Back cut? Yeah. No, constantly moving. moving. Like, there's never yep. a moment where they snap the ball and everyone's motion. standing still. Like, it's shrunk down formations. Mm -hmm. People are full speed motion. You got a, a guy going this way, then a, a fake handoff this way. It looks like arena some football. Form, some, yes, like some form of an RPO right. this way. But I've also heard the conversation that, like, well, they, Tua gets the ball out so quickly because he has to or that – or um, – you know, he's not good enough. That's not the case. Tua's getting the ball out so fast, and the ball isn't traveling far downfield because that offensive line stinks. Right. And he has to mask has it. To. And so, like, the, the ball has to come out so quickly. Imagine uh, having to think as a – like, you play such in a defensive posture if you're Tua. I can't hold the ball. I can't push it down the field. It's got to get out of my hands. I got to see this defender to my right, that defender to my left. I got to make sure that I read the RPO the right way, inside out, and make sure that – we got to go score. It's not strictly yeah. about just don't turn the ball over. Right. So I, I think that, again, it's another example of how well Tua is playing given how poorly the five guys up front are. So the numbers bear out that way, too, and I yeah. think this is pretty interesting. When you think about how quickly he's getting the ball out, that's second fastest in the league. Two and a half seconds, time to throw. Completion percentage, you see where that is, 71%. Total QBR, seven ranks seventh in the NFL. But look at that line at the bottom. The Dolphins' yeah. offensive line last in pass block win rate this year at 45%. And Mina, that doesn't even tell the entire story when you think about another component of the offense that Tua isn't getting a lot of help from. Yeah, the run blocking is a nightmare as well. Uh, Gaskin, Salvin Ahmed, uh, you know, when you watch, they're getting hit behind the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. yeah. over and over and over. And then when you see how effective the RPO game is, you ask yourself, well, what if they actually had an efficient run game? How much right. better could this be even with that but I have a question for you actually listening to you talk about too and how good he's been with the RPO game you know watching them play the Giants I lost track of the RPOs and there are very few straight dropbacks yeah. but yeah. when they do have straight dropbacks at times he struggles and I wonder hmm. do you worry that because this offense is so RPO dependent in, in part because of the offensive line 
he is not developing as a drop back passer? Like, could that potentially inhibit him down the road? I, I think yes. My answer is yes. Um, I think that when they do call drop back passes, he is so focused on get the ball out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's, it's almost feel, yeah. yeah, it's almost like okay, if I'm I'm kicking it to the flat now, strictly because I know if I try to get to a second or third I'm gonna hit, get hit. I'm going to get hit. Yeah. And right. again, then we're we're playing in second and thirteen or third and right. ten plus, and they can't play that way. So to your to your question, my answer is yes, but I believe it's because. He's so focused on trying to help the team win and what's best for the team rather than his own individual growth. And I'll add another point, too. It's a guy that is always fighting that narrative that he's injury prone. Yeah. So he's thinking, mm -hmm. please Heck don't yeah. Five in a row in the NFL is five in a row in the it NFL. It is, no, right. And, and, We're and, giving him flowers, you and know. And two, it's in the same vein of what he did at Bama. It was yeah. a lot of RPO games. Yeah. Get the ball out of the More explosive, more explosive with the guys. And yeah. right. better yeah. wide a much better offensive line. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.